Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Welcome to part three of my, I guess we'll call it the FreeNAS Your House series, uh, where I show you how to install FreeNAS file server and a bunch of services to go onto it to make your home life easier. Today, we are doing probably the most requested feature, which is whole home ad blocking. When I say whole home, I don't mean your desktop computers. I don't mean uh, your laptop. I mean, every device that connects to the internet in your house will have ad blocking. Uh, all those little ads on the free apps that always show the banners at the top, those will all go away. It, it's literally magic. The really cool thing about this is if you've been following along with my series, you don't need anything other than the download link for the Ubuntu server down in the video description. Click on the link, it's going to take you to ubuntu.com slash downloads, and you're going to download the Ubuntu Server 16.04 LTS edition. Once you've got that downloaded, let's get started. So once you have the Ubuntu Server 16.04 LTS downloaded, uh, we can log back into our FreeNAS server and get the virtual machine configured. So first you're going to want to go over to the VM tab, that's the virtual machine tab, and you're going to click add VM. We're going to add a virtual machine, I'm going to name it Piehole. Actually, I'm going to name it craft Piehole. That's most of my computers in the house start with craft. Uh, description is ad blocker. Virtual CPUs. Uh, I would recommend giving this two CPUs. Uh, that is not the number of CPUs that it's going to designate as only used for Piehole. That is the max number of threads that the virtual machine is allowed to utilize. So if it's sitting there idle, those two CPUs are still available to your free NAS box. This is simply the max that Piehole can take. Um, and Pihole's not that RAM dependent. You can give it one gig of RAM. I'm gonna go ahead and give it two since I've got 32 gigs available. Um, I've got more than enough. One gig is probably plenty for this setup though. So that's entirely up to you. So I'm gonna give it 2,048 megabytes. We're gonna do UEFI boot mode because uh, LTS 16.04 is capable of UEFI. And when the server starts, I want this machine to auto start. So I'm gonna click on that and click okay. Oh, dang it. No dashes are allowed. All right, we'll name it Craft Piehole. So once our VM is set up, uh, you can see Craft Piehole is there. We're gonna go and add storage for it. I'm gonna create a virtual hard disk. Uh, so I'm gonna go over to storage. I'm gonna click RAID 5, and I'm gonna say add ZVOL. And my ZVOL name is gonna be Craft Piehole. And I am going to create a 60 gigabyte, so big G, little I, big B. Uh, that will create a 60 gigabyte virtual hard drive. Now that's not, I'm taking 60 gigabytes of storage space away from my server. That's saying that's the max space that my VM is allowed to take. If the OS install is only two gigabytes, it's only gonna take up two gigabytes. And add ZVOL. So I'm gonna go back to my VMs. I'm gonna click on Piehole and I'm gonna click on devices. Now, I've already got a virtual NIC installed. What I need to do under VNC is double click that and allow VNC web. That will actually allow me to control the virtual machine from my web interface here. And I'm gonna click okay. Next, I'm gonna add device. I'm going to add a device to craft piehole and I'm gonna add a disk. Uh, it's going to use the ZVOL craft piehole. It automatically detects it since that's the only one I have. And I'm gonna click okay. And the last thing that I need is actually a virtual CD-ROM drive. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but say CD-ROM. I'm gonna browse for CD-ROM. Now, if you follow my tutorial for FreeNAS, you should already have a file server set up. So you will actually want to take your Ubuntu ISO that you downloaded and put it onto your file server. So I'm gonna click the Ubuntu 1604 ISO and click OK. Now I have a bootable disk, a install virtual hard drive, a VNC keyboard monitor and mouse, as well as a virtual network card. We are ready to start our VM. So I'm gonna go back to VMs, I'm gonna click Piehole, and I'm gonna click Start. Yes, Start Piehole. The next thing that I do is I click on Piehole, and I'm gonna hit this button right here that says VNC via web. Press Connect, and there's my virtual machine. And as you can see, it's already booted up into the Ubuntu installer. So I'm gonna say Install Ubuntu, and you guys can pick whatever you want. I'm gonna click my English US defaults. So English language, United States, uh, default keyboard layout, English US, English US. All right, next thing you need to do is you're gonna set up a host name, which is the name of your computer. I'm gonna stay with my standards and name mine craft piehole Now you'll need to create a username. So you'll need to create both the full name and the short name. They can be the exact same thing. And then set up a password for your user. Type password in right both times would help. There we go. 
And no, I'm not going to encrypt the directory. Sorry, my head's behind the or in front of the uh, the dialogue there. And yes, I am in U.S. Los Angeles time zone. As much as I hate being associated with California. And this is where you're going to set up the partition for your virtual hard drive. So I'm going to use guided, use the entire disk, and set up LVM. I'm going to select my 60 gigabyte drive that I already did. And right here, we're going to go to, yes, write these changes to the LVM. Yes, I want to use the full disk. And right here is, yes, I want to force a UEFI installation because that's the boot type that I selected for my Ubuntu VM. And again, yes, write changes to the disk. This uses a lot of scary words when you're booting or when you're installing, and uh, it's going to make it sound like, ooh, do I want to do that? The answer in the setup is yes, you want to do that. Yes, I want to erase the disk. Yes, I want to install Ubuntu. Yes, I want to force UEFI. You have to explicitly say those things. Uh, if you're new to this, it's a little bit scary. Don't worry about it. Just follow the instructions here. You'll be just fine. This right here is asking if you want to do automatic updates. Uh, I usually say install security updates automatically. Uh, that will take care of all the security related things related to your VM, uh, and it will allow you to manually update packages or manually seek out those updates for packages. The one extra package that I'm going to install for my own use is I'm going to install the OpenSSH server, which will allow me to SSH into the machine to manage it without going through the web interface and, and whatnot. Uh, that's completely up to you whether or not you want to do that. Okay, installation is complete. So the virtual machine is going to reboot automatically. What you will need to do is close your VNC session because that will not automatically reconnect. Go back to FreeNAS, click on PyHole, and open that VNC web session again. And right here, I'm at the login screen. I'm going to log in with the username that I created earlier, as well as the password that I created earlier. First thing I'm going to do on this is I'm going to make sure it has all of its security updates as well as any essential package updates. So I'm going to type in sudo sudo space apt dash get and update. I'm going to type in my password once. That's going to go out to Ubuntu servers and it's going to make sure it has a list of updated packages that are available. Once that is done, I'm going to do the same thing, sudo space apt dash get space and upgrade. This will actually perform the upgrade to all the packages. And as you can see, I've got a couple to download there. I've got 71.1 megabytes worth of updates to download. All right, once that is done, I'm going to go ahead and set up a static IP address. Now again, just like the FreeNAS server, you can set this up as a static reservation in your DHCP server on your router. Uh, you'll need to look up your own individual documentation for that. Uh, or you can set it up as a static IP address set on the Ubuntu server itself, and that's the method I'm going to do. So I'm going to type in sudo, uh, which gives me administrative access, space, nano, which is a text editor, space, forward slash etc, slash, network, if I can type it in, slash interfaces, hit enter. And right here, uh, this iFace uh, ENP0S3, that is actually my network interface. Uh, and right now it is configured, if you can see right here, for DHCP. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to set this up as a static interface. I'm going to hit enter and a tab. And I'm going to type in address space 10.0.1.3, which is where I want my particular Ubuntu server to sit. And again, it helps if I type in things correctly. Sorry, I'm on a window that's like literally this big. So uh, I've got a full screen over here, but I'm trying to keep my face forward. So bear with me here. Do another tab, netmask. 255.255.255.0. And again, that's going to depend on your exact network uh, specs uh, or configuration. Uh, again, most of them are a slash 24 or a exactly as I listed, 255.255.255.0. I'm going to type in a gateway, which is uh, your router. So in my case, it's 10.0.1.1. And then I'm going to type in DNS dash name servers. Uh, this is a uh, how the Pi Hole will access the internet uh, through DNS. Now, all of your internal devices are going to point to Pi Hole for DNS from now on. Uh, this is how Pi Hole gets its DNS from outside. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and type in Google servers just for uh, uh, simplicity. So that's 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4. .4. And again, if you have other DNS servers like OpenDNS or anything else that you wanna use, enter those there. I'm gonna press 
Control X, it's gonna ask me if I wanna save. I'm gonna type yes. It's gonna ask a file name. I wanna write the exact same file name, so I'm gonna press enter. And now I'm gonna say sudo reboot. And when this boots back up, it should have the new IP address. And the easiest way to check is if I type if config, it should tell me that my new IP address is 10.0.1.3. And to test, I'm gonna ping 8.8.8.8, .8 and I have internet access. The other thing that I can do is I can ping google.com. Same thing, I have internet access. We are good to go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was actually the most difficult part. The easy part is actually installing Pi-hole onto this. Uh, for that, I'm gonna type in sudo space curl space dash little s, big S, and a capital L space https colon slash slash install dot pi dash hole dot net space with a pipe and bash. And I'm gonna enter my username. Once this goes, this will install PyHole. It's that easy. And it's gonna ask what DNS you want to use. Again, I'm using Google. You can use whatever you want, open DNS, level three, etc., etc. Um, I'm gonna block from both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. And it's asking if my network configuration is correct. I'm going to say yes and you wish to install the web admin interface, I'm going to leave it as uh, on, and you want to log queries. Uh, this is completely up to you if you want to uh, keep a log of internet traffic or log blocks that are on your network, uh, it'll do both. This, this will keep your network history, so keep that in mind. If you're a little bit more security conscious and you don't want someone uh, breaking into your house, stealing your server and going, oh look, get all the things that Jeff visited, uh, you can turn that off but uh, I'm gonna leave it on. Leaving it on also makes it a little bit easier to find things that are being blocked on your network that should not be blocked on your network. So once it's finished, it'll give you this verification screen. Uh, my IP address is 10.0.1.3. Uh, you will access the PyHole web interface at 10.0.1.3 slash admin. And it also gives you your web admin temporary password. Uh, you're gonna wanna write that down and uh, immediately log in and then change that. And now that we're installed at this point, I'm going to go to a new window and I'm gonna type in that web address, 10.0.1.3 slash admin, and it should bring up the PyHole admin page. Uh, as you can see, I have 106,980 domains on the block list. Uh, this block list is modifiable. You can download more lists. Uh, I'm not gonna get into that today because the default PyHole does a fantastic job of, of keeping your network free of ads. Um, but this just verifies that we're actually up and running. Uh, the next step is setting up your router to point your internal DNS to 10.0.1.3. Again, your exact network setup is going to depend on you uh, to find that information out. Uh, uh, so easiest place to go is go to your router login page, get down to that and see if you can set an internal DNS address. This may also be under your router's DHCP settings. And I've gone ahead and logged into PyHole. Uh, I mentioned uh, you might need to add Hulu to your allow list. Uh, where you're gonna to wanna to add that is to the whitelist. Uh, Hulu, they change their ad servers all the time, so you'll wanna look that up online. Uh, just Google Hulu ad servers or Hulu ad block and uh, find out what sites you need to add to that whitelist. All right, and this is what you're left with. I'm gonna leave you with this just quick example. This is my favorite website to go to because they have a lot of ads, but they're not intrusive. And so it, it's a really good test for, for an ad blocker. Uh, you can see my ad blocker is disabled. I'm on hackaday.com. They've got a banner ad at the top. They've got these little side ads right there. And if I scroll down the page, they've got a couple more that kind of pop in and out. Like I said, this is the way advertisements should be done. Uh, but I'm gonna show you what happens when I refresh the page. Again, my ad blocker is disabled. I'm gonna hit refresh, and this is going through PyHole. You notice the banner ads disappeared, the couple square ads disappeared there, and if I scroll down, that ad right in the center section is gone as well. This is what all websites will do for you from now on. Uh, it is, like I said, it's literally magic. Uh, there's no 
things to install on your on your OS side. There's nothing to install on your cell phone. There's there's no additional software. Once you install this, it's literally set it and forget it. So anyway, guys, I hope that was helpful. Uh, again, this can be achievable with a Raspberry Pi. You can do a very similar process with that. Uh, the thing I like about this is it's all running off a single box. It, it's one power supply. Everything runs off the same box and, and it, it all just works. So uh, that's my theory on, on running a home server is it should be as simple as possible. Uh, I, I don't want to open my closet and see just this giant rat's nest of computers and servers and 10 different extension cords. I would rather see one box with one network cable going in. So everyone, I hope this was helpful. Uh, again, I'm going to mention uh, I'm now on Patreon and one of my Patreon perks is getting access to my Discord channel. That's uh, access to uh, chat with myself as well as John, Steve, and Rhett, uh, the three co-hosts that I have on Talking Heads every week. Uh, we are more than happy to lend advice, talk about beer, talk about current events, tech topics, whatever. If you want to join on that, get onto Patreon. There's a link down in the video description to my Patreon page. I've got a water cooling project that's in the works right now. I've got... Uh, a number of different things that I'm planning out that are going to be just for my Patreon members, merch giveaways, uh, uh, exclusive projects, exclusive details on projects, uh, as well as that chat that I mentioned. So please jump on there. It's a great way to support the channel. And every dollar that I make on Patreon goes right back into content or equipment to produce this channel. Same deal with my Amazon affiliate link. Click down in the description. Uh, any dollar you spend on Amazon helps this channel out. Uh, again, helping me produce more content for you guys. So my drink dried up about a half hour ago. I've literally been sucking on the chocolate syrup and uh, ice cubes that are left in this. I'm going to go finish this off and then go to bed. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really hope this was helpful. Let me know down in the comments if uh, you guys are running Piehole now, how it's working for you, was this tutorial helpful, and anything else you want to see me do with this FreeNAS box. Uh, there's a lot of cool projects out there. Uh, the next one up is probably going to be how to move your Steam library off of your desktop machine onto your FreeNAS box. Uh, let me know if you want to see that. that. Like I said, that's going to be my next video. Anyway, I'm rambling at this point. I'm going to go to bed. Cheers, guys. Just like that is magic. Oh my God, that's good. Oh, well guys, that's going to do it for me. Uh, we'll catch you in the next video. <laughs>